Welcome to Lichfield Cathedral, whether you're here in person or joining us online. If you're using our red prayer books, then the service begins on page 179, and the psalm for today is Psalm 102, which you'll find on page 798, 798. Today the church celebrates the feast of St. Swithin, Bishop of Winchester in the 9th century. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Psalm 102 that's on page 798. O oh Lord, hear my prayer and let my crying come before you and not your face from me. In the day of my distress, incline your ear to me. When I call, make haste to answer me. For my days are consumed in smoke, and my bones burn away as in a furnace. My heart is smitten down and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread from the sound of my groaning. My bones cleave fast to my skin. I am become like a vulture in the wilderness like an owl that haunts the ruins. I keep watch and am become like a sparrow, solitary upon the housetop. My enemies revile me all the day long, and those who rage at me have sworn together against me. I have eaten ashes for bread and mingled my drink with weeping because of your indignation and wrath. For you have taken me up and cast me down. My days fade away like a shadow, and I am withered like grass. But you, O Lord, shall endure forever, and your name through all generations. You shall arise and have pity on Zion. It is time to have mercy upon us. Surely the time has come, for your servants love her very stones and feel compassion for her dust. Then shall the nations fear your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has built up Zion and shown himself in glory, when he has turned to the prayer of the destitute and does not despise their plea, this shall be written for those that come after. And a people yet unborn shall praise the Lord, for he has looked down from his holy height. And from the heavens he beheld the earth, that he might hear the signs of the prisoner and set free those condemned to die, that the name of the Lord may be proclaimed in Zion 
and his praises in Jerusalem when the peoples are gathered together and the kingdoms also to serve the Lord. He has brought down my strength in my journey and has shortened my days. I pray, O oh my God, do not take me in the midst of my days. Your years endure throughout all generations. In the beginning you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They shall perish, but you will endure. They all shall wear out like a garment, you change them like clothing, and they shall be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not fail. The children of your servants shall continue, and their descendants shall be established in your sight. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Old Testament from the book of Nehemiah continues the account of what happens as the people of Israel settle again in Jerusalem. Now on the 24th day of this month, the people of Israel were assembled with fasting and in sackcloth and with dust on their heads. Then those of Israelite descent separated themselves from all foreigners and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their ancestors. They stood up in their place and read from the book of the law of the Lord our their God for a fourth part of the day, and for another fourth they made confession and worshipped the Lord their God. Then Jeshu, Bani, Kadmil, Shabani, Buni, Sherebai, Bani, and Shenadi stood on the stairs of the Levites and cried out with a loud voice to the Lord their God. Then the Levites, Jesu, Kadmiel, Ban, Habashne, Sherebath, Hodai, Shabani, and Panatha, said, Stand up and bless the Lord your God from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. And Ezra said, You are the Lord, you alone. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, and with all their host, the earth and all that is in it, the seas and all that is in them, to all of them you gave life, and the host of heavens worships you. You are the Lord, the God who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldeans and gave him the name Abraham. And you found his heart faithful before you, and you made with him a covenant to give to his descendants the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite, and the Gerashite. And you have fulfilled your promise, for you are righteous. And you saw the distress of our ancestors in Egypt, and heard their cry at the Red Sea. You performed signs and wonders against Pharaoh and all his servants and all the people of his land, for you knew that they acted insolently against our ancestors. You made a name for yourself which remains to this day. And you divided the sea between them so that they passed through the sea on dry land. But you threw their pursuers into the depths like a stone into mighty waters. Moreover, you led them by day with a pillar of cloud and by night with a pillar of fire to give them light on their way in which they should go. You came down also upon Mount Sinai and spoke with them from heaven and gave them right ordinances and true laws, good statutes and commandments. And you made known your holy Sabbath to them, and gave them commandments and statutes and a law through your servant Moses. For their hunger you gave them bread from heaven, and for their thirst you brought water for them out of the rock, and you told them to go in to possess the land you swore to give them. But they and our ancestors acted presumptuously and stiffened their necks and did not obey your commandments. They refused to obey and were not mindful of the wonders you had performed among them, but they stiffened their necks and determined to return to the slavery in Egypt. But you are a God, ready to forgive, 
gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and you did not forsake them. Even when they cast an image of a calf for themselves and said, this is your God which brought you up out of Egypt and had committed great blasphemies, you and your great mercies did not forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud that led them in the way did not leave them by day, nor the pillar of fire by night that gave them light on the way in which they should go. You gave your good spirit to instruct them and did not withhold your manna from their mouths and give them water for their thirst. For forty years you sustained them in the wilderness, so they lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell. And you gave them kingdoms and peoples that allotted to them every corner. So they took possession of the land of King Sheha of Heshbon and the land of King Og of Bashan. You multiply their descendants like stars of heaven and you brought them into the land that you had told their ancestors to enter and possess. Here ends the first reading. A song of the justified. Our hope is not in vain because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe, who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to death from our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have gained access to the grace in which we stand and rejoice in our hope of the glory of God. We even exult in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance and endurance produces hope, and our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God proves his love for us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. Our reading from the New Testament is the first half of the final chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the Church of Chentry, and to those who welcome her in the Lord, as is fitting for the saints, and help her in whatever way she may require from you, for she has been a benefactor of many and of myself as well. Greet Prisca and Aquila, who work with me in Jesus Christ, and who risk their necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also the churches of the Gentiles. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my brother Apennius, who was the first convert in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, who has worked very hard among you. Greet Adronicus and Junia, my relatives, who were in prison with me. They are prominent among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, my co-worker in Christ, and my, my beloved Statius. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my relative, Herodion, and greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Trephenae and Treposo. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and greet his mother, a mother to me also. Greet us in the crisis, Felgen, Hermes, Patrobas, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who are with them. Greet Philogus, Julia, Nurses, and his sister, Olympus and all the saints who are with them. 
greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. We allow God's word to speak to us in the silence of our heart. So our responsory, forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation, be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will make you ruler over much. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. This day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation, has thrown strength with his arm and scattered the cloud. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, he has filled the country with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, but has made ancestors to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will make you ruler over much. So we bring our personal prayers to our Father in heaven. We thank you, God, for the Litchfield Festival, for all the celebrations that have already happened in this cathedral church and for this final weekend. We pray that all those who have been inspired by beauty, awe, wonder, music, poetry, words that have spoken into their hearts may find that word be a word that leads them closer to you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Thank you, Lord, for all who at the end of this week are grateful for the work they've been able to do, for the way they feel they've contributed to their well-being of others around. And we pray for those, Lord, who during this week would have made a contribution had they had the opportunity, but were denied that or those who, although they had the opportunity to be working, found that of no fulfillment and no joy. Grant, O Lord, in whatever we do, that we might find ways to transform our work with your grace to your glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Thank you, Lord, for those who are called at this time to exercise great statesmanship among the nations. For President Biden and all those who, along with him, have been seeking some way in which the conflict in the land that is named holy might come to some just end. For those who carry with themselves that opportunity to speak into the situation in Ukraine, there might be peace, there might be justice. And for those in our own nation who seek that office of being our Prime Minister, that they might be transformed by the conversations of which they are part. They might listen to those who speak around them. They might discover a renewed vocation to be the servant of all and to seek in particular the welfare of those who are most vulnerable, both in this land and throughout this our world. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And grant, O Lord, that in the thoughts and prayers and concerns of our own heart for those who are particularly close to us, that there might be for them that awareness both of our love and of your presence. Lord, accept these and all the prayers of our hearts through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, by whose grace we celebrate again the feast of your servant Swithin, grant that as he governed with gentleness the people committed to his care, so we rejoicing in our Christian inheritance may always seek to build up your church in unity and love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.